we have to learn actually to read the Bible as what it originally was. And in this case, it's a letter without chapters, without verses. And I want to show you here in Romans 9 how important that is and how we miss something if we read only single verses. You have in mind the context where we come from, the way that Paul walks through Romans 1 through 8, and he reaches then in in the end of Romans 8, this peak, where he says, I am absolutely convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers, neither present circumstances nor things that will come, nor even demonic powers, neither hate nor depth, nor anything else that has been created. You see that Paul is looking around and saying, just bring what is able, what is more powerful, what can separate me from the love of God. He says, I'm absolutely convinced that none of these are able to separate us from that love of the one true only living God which is in Messiah Yeshua, our Lord. Now you have to be able to say this together with Paul if you want to understand what is coming now. If you personally are not able to say that, I would like to invite you to turn to the Father in heaven and say, Father, I want to commit my life to you, but I want to experience that love. In Messiah Yeshua. So, we are there. That I hopefully you can say amen to that. That you are caught up. You are bind, bound into that love. You know nothing can separate me from that love. And you have in mind that Paul is writing a letter. There is no end of chapter 8, beginning of chapter 9. But he goes on, and look what he's talking then, or what he's writing. He's not just talking it, he's writing it. He says, I am speaking the truth in Messiah. Now, I have to tell you a little bit about my personal background. I have been for 18 years a journalist. And I'm sure that I, in a lot of instances, I, I still read the Bible as a journalist. And if it happened to me that we were as a press, at a press conference and some politician told us about what he's going to do and what he's dreaming of and where he wants to get people to follow him and all that, and then if he talks eight chapters and at the beginning of chapter nine, I mean, in this press conference, I separated into chapters, yeah? You remember, it was just one letter going on. Now. After eight chapters, he suddenly says, now listen, now I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, let's be honest now. If a politician is doing this, you know what happens with a journalist? In my head, it goes on, now wait a minute, what have you been talking? Eight chapters all the way long. What have you been saying? If you are now going to tell the truth. What I want to tell you is if Paul in chapter 9 of Romans starts off by saying, I'm speaking the truth, we all should stumble over it because it is one of the most scandalous passages in Scripture. Actually, Paul is going to say something that is so scandalous that I have not yet found the Bible translation that really translates faithfully what Paul actually says. But I want to be, go slowly there. It will be next time that we talk about what he's going to say. I just want to re-emphasize that, you know, there are different affirmations that are similar where Paul writes to his readers, now listen guys, um, Really, I'm not telling the truth. You have to listen to me. 
He does that, for example, in Corinthians or in Thessalonians, or he writes it to Timothy. But in all these cases, it's people he knew. And in Corinth, he actually had a congregation uh, that was a kind of a tricky congregation. There were some people who say, oh, we are followers of Kepha and of Peter. And some said, oh, no, we are, we, we do like the teaching of Apollos. And others said, no, 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 Paul is the one who is a real good teacher. So if you have such a situation in a congregation, it makes absolute sense that a teacher like Paul says, listen, guys, now here I'm going to tell you something that is so crucial. You have to listen to it, and we have to agree on that. Whether you are of the Apollo party or the Peter party or the Paul party, doesn't matter. The church in Rome, Paul didn't know it all. And there is no other affirmation in the New Testament that is so deep. Actually, it was an archbishop of uh, about a thousand years ago, a Greek Orthodox arch archbishop um, of Ochrida. Uh, his name was Theophylact. He observed that Paul was calling for three witnesses. He says, I'm speaking the truth in Messiah. I'm not lying. My conscience, that's the second witness confirms as an additional witness and now the third one is the Holy Spirit that connects my conscience with Messiah. He says, my sorrow is overwhelming, unceasing the pain in my heart. I'm speaking the truth. I'm not lying. And he's calling for three witnesses to say something that is so scandalous that no Bible translator so far I know of has been able to translate it literally what Paul is going to say. 